Let's continue our discussion of angles. Okay. First of all, we've been already drawing angles as part of a circle on the plane. So we need to make sure we understand something about the plane. The axes divide the plane up into quadrants and they follow the direction of angles. So quadrant one, and then we move counterclockwise to quadrant two, three, and four. It is convention that you use Roman numerals to label the quadrants. Now just to make sure we understand the angles appropriately, we're going to go through and label first degrees and then radians that are the boundary of each quadrant. So zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and back to 360 degrees. Zero and 360 degrees are, of course, coterminal angles, and sometimes we prefer one over the other. Now for radians, we start at zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. Okay. Now, one of the formulas we're going to use is something called arc length. And we already saw arc length when we defined radians. Okay. If you remember, we had a terminal side, or initial side that turned into a terminal side of an angle theta. And the arc it cut out was called S, and that was the arc length. And if you remember, the definition of radians was that theta equals S over R. This can be rewritten to become the arc length formula. So the arc length formula is that S equals R theta. Okay. Now, we just have one thing to be careful of, and this is warning number 23. It must be in radians. What I mean by that is the angle theta must be in radians in order to use the arc length formula. And the reason is, is because the formula came from the definition of radians. Okay. So, let's do two examples of this. First, suppose we have a 55 degree angle in a circle with radius 10 inches. I would like to find the arc length cut out by this angle. Well, it must be put into radians. So first, we're going to transform this degrees into radians by multiplying by pi over 180 degrees. This becomes 11 pi over 36 radians. And now, S, which equals R theta, will be 10 times 11 pi over 36. If you use a calculator, this is approximately 9.59931. And the arc length and the radius will have the same units, so this is going to be in inches. Okay. Now, a second example. This is one of my favorites of the power of trigonometry. Now, the Earth is divided up into 24 time zones of roughly equal width, okay, because there are 24 hours in a day. So, if you were imagine a point above the Earth and the Earth were turning beneath it, in one hour, that point would start above one time zone and move to be above the next one. So, Chicago and Denver are the center of two consecutive time zones in the United States. Furthermore, they happen to be at fairly close to the same uh, latitude which is important for this kind of calculation. They are also almost exactly a thousand miles apart. Okay, so consider the Earth. Okay, we have Chicago and Denver and the arc length is a thousand miles. Okay, now we are gonna use this information to calculate the radius of the Earth to pretty good accuracy. But of course, we're going to need the angle. So what angle is cut out between these two cities? Well, they're the center of two consecutive time zones, so it must be 1 24th of the angles, or 2 pi divided by 24, which simplifies to pi over 12. So now, 
If we want to use this formula to calculate radius, it says that radius will be S divided by theta. In this case, that's 1,000 divided by pi twelfths. Okay, that works out to be approximately 3,819.72 miles. Now, this was a very easy calculation. We used several estimates in here, but we came remarkably close to the actual answer. The actual radius of the Earth varies a little bit, but it's between 3,947 and 3,968.